I finished The Last of Us Part 2 in three and a half days. I have to say that with everything surrounding this game, the review bombing that occurred and keeps happening on Metacritic, the hate and toxicity surrounding the game on release day was truly one of the most energy draining moments in my time as a gamer. By the time that this was all happening, I only had 4 hours in the game and I had so many mixed emotions, I truly was in a state that I was never ever before in when playing or watching through any media before. Shamefully, my immersion on The Last of Us Part 2 was fading because I was so focused on how the game was being received by others, good or bad. I was getting exhausted to the point in which I wasn't even able to play this game properly. I then decided to stay off social media for a while, basically for the whole weekend, and just focus and immerse myself in this game and to have my own true opinions and judge it for myself. Now, I finally completed the game during the opening weekend of The Last of Us Part 2, and I took my time with the game, absorbing everything I played through and saw. After all this, I can safely say that The Last of Us Part 2 is truly one of the most intense, emotional, and brutal pieces of media I have ever consumed, making me feel emotions so strong I cried non-stop in certain sections of the game and felt how my heart was just breaking into tiny little pieces, in a way that no other type of media has ever done to me before, and that's truly putting it lightly. Now, that doesn't mean this game is perfect. In fact, this game has a few issues and a few flaws that for me personally, it just doesn't sit right with me. But even though I had those issues, it did not affect my overall feelings for this game as much as I thought it would. And I decided to keep my mind as open as possible to push through those crazy and heartbreaking moments in the first third of the game. I can't wait to tell you guys how I truly felt playing through this story. So, in this in-depth review, I am going to talk to you guys about 4 things that can truly review this game as fully as possible in my opinion. And the things I will talk about is first, graphics, the second will be gameplay, the third will be music and environmental sounds, and fourth and the most important thing, the story. In the story section, I'm going to talk to you guys in the first quarter of it without spoilers. And then in the rest of the section, it will contain spoilers because it will be impossible for me to give you an in-depth and objective review of what I felt of this game if I don't specifically tell you guys exactly what happened and what I felt during those moments. So, let's now talk about why this game, The Last of Us Part 2, even though it could have a few flaws, it is still an emotional and brutal ride that broke my heart and, in my honest opinion, is a flawed yet complex masterpiece. So, here we go. Saying that the graphics in The Last of Us Part 2 are impressive is actually putting it very lightly. This game pushes the PS4 to its absolute limits. Now, what impressed me the most about the graphics of this game was when we were in the Seattle area and I was playing the part in which Ellie is with Jesse during a very heavy rainy day. The details on the floors, reflecting from the cloudy skies, seeing how shiny the floor looks while it rained, and the light hitting the ground, those details truly made me forget I was playing a video game, and I actually thought for just a second that we were watching an actual 4K movie. That is how good the graphics look in this game. The scenery in this game, the backgrounds, how the sky gives out natural light and makes everything feel so grounded, so real. How the streets and buildings and the insights are designed. It truly all feels like you are there with Ellie. This game already feels next gen. And I just can't imagine how blown away I will be and most of us will be and how sick this game will look when the PS5 enhancements are done to this game. This game is truly the best looking video game I've ever played in my life. God of War was my previous most favorite graphical game I've ever played. Probably Red Dead Redemption 2 is a strong contender for that. But for me, 
the details in The Last of Us Part 2 is truly what makes this game shine a little bit brighter than those games graphically, and that's honestly saying a lot. Now, how about facial animations? Well, I'm here to say that this game takes the prize for me of the game with the best facial animations out there. The non-verbal communication using facial animations and the amount of detail done to make these facial animations the most realistic as possible is truly incredible from the Naughty Dog team. When the characters are angry, frustrated, or using force or just doing anything, their face can actually turn red. Their veins will pop realistically. During cutscenes, when Ellie and Dina are talking to each other for example, you watch them interact and the way these characters look at each other, it is very easy to forget that these are computer generated fictional characters. It feels so real and immersive that it really pushes this game's story even further and it really makes you believe it. If it's an intense scene, it really makes you feel it. The mocap in this is brilliant, with how the characters move and just do normal human things. It captures it very beautifully in every scene in a masterful way, making you feel what the scene is trying to make you feel. And just to put the cherry on top, transitions between scenes and actual gameplay are so smooth, so seamless, and with little cut to black and then gameplay. That truly amazes me how amazing the graphics really are in this game. Usually in games, there are cutscenes that just basically cut to black and then you see a gameplay aspect of the game and it feels downgraded a little bit and it actually makes you lose some immersion. Games like God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2 does seamless transitions from cutscene to gameplay. But The Last of Us Part 2 graphically beats them only by a little bit, and honestly is a pleasure to watch how games are feeling more realistic more than ever before, and it's honestly a treat to experience. Now let's talk about the most important thing in any video game, gameplay. Now if you guys remember, for any of you who have played The Last of Us Part 1, the gameplay in The Last of Us Part 1 was at times good, it was acceptable. It did the job it was supposed to do. But as time has passed, and then if we go back to play The Last of Us Part 1, I can surely say that people usually don't say that they want to play The Last of Us Part 1 because the gameplay is phenomenal. The gameplay on that hasn't aged too well, it's acceptable from today's standards, but it's not too good. Now, what The Last of Us Part 2 does is that basically it takes the same gameplay from the first game and it just makes it feel more smoother, so much more realistic, and it's just a pleasure to play with. This game beats that game in gameplay by a mile in my opinion. You can do so many things now in this game that you previously could not do before. For example, now that you're using Ellie instead of Joel, the movement of Ellie feels more agile, fast, and smooth. And it really makes you feel like if you're in a mess and enemies are just shooting at you or hunting you down, that you can truly escape, hide, and wait to attack again. And that's exactly what you can do. She can also hide under cars because she's very thin. Ellie, being very agile, can dodge enemy melee attacks and cut her way through them. Both Abby and Ellie can take their enemies' weapons after they hurt them enough and use it against them. It's honestly very satisfying and truly brutal. Ellie and Abby both look, are built, and play totally different. Even though they both can do similar things, like use melee weapons against their enemies, craft items, and break windows to get into certain sections and collect precious items to craft and survive, Ellie is more weaker and relies on being more tactical, faster, and using stealth to her advantage because she is more smaller. Plus, her switchblade comes in handy because they never break like shifts do. Abby, on the other hand, it feels like you're playing as Joel when you play Abby. Abby has the ability to kill enemies with her bare hands, and she can actually fight her way out sometimes by being physical. A disadvantage with her is that she doesn't have a switchblade, so she depends on breakable shifts if she wants to use stealth versus clickers for example. Now gameplay wise, I have to admit 
the sections with Abby and her encounters with the enemies she faced honestly have been one of the most brutal and intense moments I've ever had in a video game. But we will get into that in the story section of this video. Now moving into music and environmental sounds. Okay, this is where for me, if this is not good in a story based game, no matter how good the story is, if the music and the sound effects just suck, I can't get immersed in a game or movie like ever. I'm so dependent on that because the music used in any media has to make me feel what I'm seeing and if it just doesn't, honestly for me it sucks. Thankfully, The Last of Us Part 2 has amazing music, although I do still prefer the first game soundtrack a little bit more. There are certain soundtracks in this game of course that they use certain beats like in the first one to make you feel familiar and know that this is still a Last of Us game but with its own uniqueness. I guess I'm just being a little bit stubborn here saying that I like the first one just 1% or 2% more, but you guys might love it more than me, but until now, for me, no one beats the simplistic and heartbreaking soundtrack of The Last of Us Part 1 in cutscenes and in certain important moments of the game. Now. During any gameplay moments when you are fighting enemies or you are in a very scary location in which you don't know if you're going to get jumped by an infected or an enemy or when you're trying to be stealthy and you're scared as hell because you don't want to be spotted, the music in this game is truly superb and in that aspect immersed me so much. I truly can say that this is one of the best music pieces to bring out emotion during gameplay I have ever ever experienced in my life. The number of times I've been scared to death playing this game because of the music is staggering. But what takes the cake for me is the environmental sounds of this game. Mixed with the music, Jesus Christ. Every building I went into, every underground section filled with infected, how the building felt and sounded like it was just going to fall all over you, how there was so many squeaky noises basically everywhere you were, making you feel like you're in an empty place, but the sounds just make you feel like you're not alone. I mean, not one time was I ever in peace playing through these sections. I had my eyes way open, totally immersed, concentrated just in case something or someone jumped at me. And if nothing happened and I made it outside, it felt like I could finally breathe and just take a minute or two to just relax, collect myself, and then move forward. There are so many of these moments that I want to talk about, but shamefully contain sometimes minor or major spoilers, and that's exactly what we're going to get into in a short few minutes. Now we're going to get into the non-spoiler section of The Last of Us Part 2. After that, we're going to talk about the spoilers and everything I felt about the game. So now we're going to start with the non-spoilers. And I have to be honest with you guys. I honestly, when I played this game, it was absolutely nothing what I expected. When Neil Druckmann said, after The Last of Us Part 2 was announced to the world in 2016, that The Last of Us Part 2 will be a story of revenge, and that it will truly show basically why this story can only work in a video game. I was truly excited, but I was honestly at the same time very scared, because The Last of Us Part 1 was honestly my favorite story based game of all time. I would even say it's my top 3 stories of all time in any media. That is how much I love this game, and in my honest opinion, I didn't think the first game needed a sequel. The story was so perfect for me, and that ending was a masterpiece, basically opened for interpretation, so many people doing fan fictions and just doing theories of what could have happened after. It was honestly a joy to watch, and it's just a joy to see how many people in this community really enjoyed this game. I was scared, but at the same time, what made me feel at peace is that Naughty Dog was the one who was going to produce it, of course, and the way they made this second game, honestly, I'm not disappointed at all. What I can say without spoiling this story in this section is that this story is truly not for everyone. I thought that this game was going to be just another adventure between the characters we love, Joel and Ellie, and probably an extra few characters. 
going on another adventure and you know i don't know just like an avengers endgame type of game in which we just get a lot of fan service until you vomit and even though i know this story was going to be a revenge it was going to be a little bit more darker i just expected this story to be a story of ellie looking for revenge you know probably something happened in jackson and basically hunting a two-dimensional villain with a simple villain story ellie gets her revenge end of story you know, the most cliche, generic things that, you know, video games and movies do all the time and people love. But what Naughty Dog did instead is that they gave us, in my personal and honest opinion, a story so mature, so real, with high stakes, and so many moments in which our characters do things that honestly had me scared for them. Honestly, just scared to death seeing everything that was happening. Feeling these emotions so strong that I just couldn't take what I was seeing. Naughty Dog, with the way they told this story, with the amount of hatred, gore moments, and just pure darkness surrounding everything you're doing in this game. It felt like too much, but in a good way. But it also had some moments in which, you know, you could just lay low, lower your guard, and just enjoy a little bit of sprinkle of light, reminding you how things were before you took that path of revenge with Ellie. And the issues of Ellie's immunity and that whole arc of Joel taking away humanity's last hope for a cure is truly present in this game. Now, I will be honest here. In some sections of the game, and mostly in the second half of the game when you switch with Abby, and no, that's not a spoiler, we all know we play as Abby, I honestly just wanted to drop my controller and stop playing. I felt like my immersion just broke down there. And... I just didn't like the way they switched to her so fast. But then I just picked up my controller again and just decided to push through. And I'm very happy that I did because I was very surprised with the direction that Naughty Dog went for. And in that moment that I finished the game, I was very happy. I picked it up again and I said, you know what, let me push forward and see what I can take out of this game. And honestly, I was very, very happy with what I got. Even though I enjoyed the whole game and honestly had a blast playing this game, the story does feel sometimes messy. And there were certain sections that if Naughty Dog would have placed certain scenes a little bit earlier or later in the game, I think this game would have been a little bit more impactful for the general audience and it would have felt a little bit more structured. But then I understood why they did it the way they did. And I started to appreciate all of this later on. I enjoyed the game from start to finish, even though I didn't get what I wanted or expected. I truly don't know what game or movie has made me cry so much. Honestly, I don't know because I watched Avengers Endgame and I cried at the end. I watched a lot of sad movies, romantic movies, whatever, and they don't make me cry at all. But this game, almost every hour, two hours, I was crying my eyes out. And it's something that I just couldn't understand how. But the way Naughty Dog just tells this story, it's truly amazing. If you're invested in the first story of The Last of Us, this story will hit home very, very hard. The Last of Us Part 2 has made me feel like I'm actually right there. And that these fictional computer-generated characters felt like real people. I've never been so impressed in my life with a game before. So to put it simple, this story could feel messy at times by design, but even though there are certain character actions and story plots that might not make sense to some people, I truly believe and understand what Naughty Dog was going for. And at the end of the day, this is a brutal human story. And what do we humans do all the time? Well, we're imperfect. And all we do sometimes is do things that we think at that time is logical, but sometimes for the whole world seeing us, it could seem uncharacteristic of you to do those things. And all we do is mistakes that can cost us everything. This game shows these human elements in a simple way, but complex as well. And that's why I feel this game is just ahead of its time. I don't think people are prepared for stories like this yet, or that these stories are for everyone. I wasn't prepared for this emotional ride. 
I'm very grateful that I have been part of this brutal journey that Naughty Dog created for us. And I truly recommend this game for people who were fans of the first game and are dedicated to have an open mind and see what Naughty Dog has in store for us. So now we're going to move into the spoiler section of the video. So if you guys haven't played this game yet, I would recommend you guys to go and play it or watch it on YouTube if you guys don't want to spend the money and then come back. So you've been warned. So the way we're going to talk about the story of The Last of Us Part 2 in this spoiler section, it's going to feel a little bit like a mini summary of the story, but it's just basically me going from the beginning of the story to the end and basically choosing the moments that I really, really enjoyed and just things that I really want to talk about, good or bad. Now for me, honestly, The Last of Us Part 2 started in the most perfect way it could start. Joel basically tells Tommy of what he did in the hospital in Salt Lake City, telling Tommy that he took away humanity's last chance by taking away Ellie from the surgery room, and he admitted that Ellie had to die for that cure. Tommy, of course, was shocked, and he just did not know what to say. And even when they went back to Jackson, Tommy was still shocked, but he told Joel that he will keep that secret until his grave. And Joel appreciated that and went on to see Ellie. And that's the next scene that we get. Joel enters on Ellie's room and she's busy doing whatever she's doing. And Joel just being uncharacteristically shy, you know, approaches Ellie and tries to give her a guitar. Now, this is actually parallel to what Sarah did in the first game. If you guys remember, the first game starts like this. Sarah basically wakes up and it's Joel's birthday. She gives Joel a watch as a gift and in this game it's late at night Joel goes into Ellie's room and he gives her a gift late at night and that's how these two games start people who basically die later on giving gifts to the people that they love which is very haunting and honestly amazing of that detail that Naughty Dog did I just broke down when I saw this scene and the reason why I broke down was for what Joel started to sing Sometimes you'll succeed to make this pain of me. All my stolen missing parts, I've no need for anymore. As I believe, and I believe as I can see our future day. Days of you and me Now, this is what I wanted to see in the beginning a little moment between Joel and Ellie, and it just truly melted my heart. I got exactly what I wanted. It was the perfect beginning for The Last of Us Part 2. Then we see Ellie four years later, you know, part of the Jackson community. She goes out on patrol sometimes with Dina and Jesse. And in this case, Dina and Ellie have their own adventure. They smoke weed. They have fun on their patrol and all these things. But then we switch with Abby, who was looking for a specific person that in this moment we did not know who it was. But we later find out that it was Joel. When she was looking out for Joel, she gets cornered by a horde of infected. And in that moment, Joel saves her life. Abby then tells Tommy and Joel to go back to a near cabin so they can be safe, and Tommy and Joel, they do this so they can survive. Now, it's time to talk about literally the most infamous scene probably in gaming history, Joel's death scene. Now, Joel's death scene was one of those scenes that I thought was going to happen by the end of the game, or probably by the end of the first quarter of the game. But it happens very early on, and that is the reason for Ellie going on revenge. 
Now, I just want to say that I 100% get the outrage of fans that say that Joel's death scene, the build up to it, didn't completely justify how it played out. Probably if Abby would have saved Joel instead of Joel saving Abby, then it would have made more sense for Joel and Tommy to lower their guard down and trust. But in general, lots of people are just mad that Joel was killed off. Now, I might get hate for what I'm going to say, but I think Naughty Dog did the right thing here. First, if they would have killed Dina, Jesse, Tommy, or Maria, and used that as a revenge story, avenging the death of someone that players really don't have a strong connection with, I don't think it would have been good. Probably Tommy's death would have been a little bit more impactful than Jesse, Dina, and Maria, but Joel dying for me was the perfect motivation to go on this brutal journey for revenge. And this is coming from a person who considers Joel as my favorite character in any video game ever. More than Nathan Drake, more than Kratos, more than any other character in a video game ever. People are very mad because they saw their favorite character die in a brutal way instead of a heroic way. Many people frustrated on social media when they saw the leaks happen and found out that Joel was killed, it is understandable. And it's also understandable that being killed by Abby there was going to be an immediate backlash because this character is loved by so many fans. And honestly, being in that situation when the leaks happened, it was a brutal time to be on social media. And when the game came out and we find out that Joel dies earlier on on the game, we actually see people just saying, you know what, I'm done with this game. Some streamers completely destroyed Naughty Dog for the decision to kill Joel off. And of course, the way they did it. Some people also don't understand why Joel said his name in that room filled of strangers, suggesting that Joel acted out of character and that his death was made foolish because of that. And it is just poor writing because Joel would never do this. And this is where some people sign off the game and just stop watching or playing the game. So was Naughty Dog disrespectful to Joel and to the fans of The Last of Us for killing Joel and actually killing him the way they did it? In my honest opinion, no. Joel died making a human mistake. And people forget that first, it was Tommy who spilled their names to Abby when they were escaping from the horde of infected. Either way, Joel was doomed from the start when they got to the cabin. Second, people forget that Joel has been living in peace for four years. People change, and living in peace can make you trust in others if things don't seem to be bad. And it's also confirmed by Neil Druckmann himself in a podcast made by Kinda Funny Games that Joel, Tommy, and the other people in Jackson interacted with normal people outside of Jackson if they ran into them. No violence was needed because they were just normal survivors. Plus, because Joel and Tommy once were hunters and bandits, and Tommy was once a firefly, they knew how these different factions acted, their different tactics, and everything they do or look like. So, when Joel went into the cabin, he was welcomed, he was helped, he wasn't attacked, and he already had a mini connection with Abby by saving her life. And also, Joel was seeing Tommy interacting with the other people in the mansion, telling them to go to Jackson so they can be safe there. No one was harming no one. It just seemed to be a group of normal people. Now, what people also forget about the situation is that the players, we weren't supposed to know that Abby was actually specifically looking for Joel at that time. The leaks really destroyed this moment and is now considered to be bad writing. But it was supposed to be as you playing as Abby, you getting saved by Joel, she takes you to the mansion, not knowing that actually all this time she was looking for Joel. And Abby shooting Joel and torturing him was supposed to come out of nowhere as a surprise, and then it was going to be the moment in which we were actually the player going to understand that Abby was looking for Joel all this time. Neil said it himself, the leaks really destroyed that moment, and that is why they took action to remove any content about that moment. This scene was supposed to anger you, make you feel betrayal by Abby, because you played as Abby, and wanting to go and hunt her down, and want to know why she did what she did. When I sat down and I put my emotions aside and analyzed this scene, in my personal opinion, Naughty Dog did a wonderful job in making it. 
Shame that the leaks happened and people already had predetermined ideas of this and predetermined ideas of Abby and came into the game already hating it. But shamefully, we can't change the past. Now, my only criticism of this scene is that I kind of agree with some people who say that there should have been a buildup to justify this scene. In my personal opinion, probably having like a mini scene in the beginning of the game, probably seeing the Jackson community interacting with normal strangers outside of the walls of Jackson, it's just something minor to show and justify this scene. But the scene still worked for me, and it did its job to truly make me feel disgusted and broken, and seeing my favorite character in any video game perish right in front of my eyes. Now, Joel's death ends with Ellie tracking them down, finding them, and then pinned down to the floor to witness the death of her adoptive father. And for me, as the player, seeing it in Ellie's perspective, I truly wanted to kill every single one of them, especially Abby. And that look between Joel and Ellie before Joel was killed, Joel lifting his finger towards Ellie, showing love for her in his last seconds of life, not regretting what he did by dooming the world by saving Ellie, just like he said in the last flashback of the game. If somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. He truly meant it and died believing in that. Joel didn't die in a heroic way. He died in a human way, as a mere mortal, as someone who truly has done so many bad things in the past. And then later, we find out that Abby killed Joel because the surgeon that we were forced to kill in part one was her father. The surgeon that could have saved humanity. But even through all that, he did it for Ellie and wouldn't have changed a single thing. So Joel is now gone, and we see a broken Ellie missing her father figure. We see Ellie in Joel's grave, and then goes to Joel's house and sees all his stuff. We see all his family pictures, including Ellie, Sarah, Tommy. We see a drawing that Ellie made for Joel, and Joel putting that drawing in a frame. We see Texas themes everywhere, a lot of paintings with horses. We also see Joel's different hobbies that he had before he died, and the most noticeable one was his love for music. I also noticed in Joel's main bathroom that he had a mirror missing, and props to my cousin who actually made me aware of this. This symbolizes Joel not being able to look right at himself for what he did to the world and to Ellie. So after that, I went to Joel's room, and this is where I started to cry a lot. I mean, I was in tears since the death of Joel until the end of this part of this section because it was just too much to handle. But I cried the most in this part when she saw Joel's jacket, the same one that he was using the day he died. Ellie hugging the jacket, it truly made me feel like I was Ellie, like if I lost a father. I was so filled with sadness and anger, I just couldn't wait to hunt Abby down and make her pay for what she did. Now, the story section of Ellie, for me, was truly the highlight of the game. By far, my favorite part was whenever I was controlling Ellie, in the present day, or in the flashbacks. For me personally, all the scenes, all the story beats, all the situations I was put in with Ellie, all the flashbacks, every bad and brutal decision she made and seeing how those decisions affected her even more while playing the game, it was truly amazing to experience. Seeing Ellie on her quest for revenge with Dina was truly a great way to see them interact and just talk about past experiences with Joel. They also had a scene in which melted my heart completely. Now, this scene, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually a missable one if you don't enter in this music store. But if you do enter into that music store and find the guitar in the second floor, you trigger this scene in which Ellie started to sing the same song Joel sang in the beginning of the game to Ellie. And the way Naughty Dog executed this scene was pure perfection. This was like the calm before a storm, and that is truly what it was. After that, it's just non-stop action with so many intense and brutal moments that take a toll not just on Ellie's physical body, but on her mental sanity as well. 
you see Ellie becoming what Joel once became. A person with no sympathy, losing herself, and slowly killing that part of Ellie we all grew to love in part 1. The way Ellie goes and kills Nora, and seeing how she was feeling after that, I remember feeling scared for Ellie, because the Ellie that we once knew could be gone if she keeps doing what she's doing. And this ride, this experience with Ellie, was perfectly executed by Naughty Dog in my opinion. Now, seeing the multiple flashbacks of Ellie and Joel in the Ellie section of the story was truly amazing. The story was slowly revealing you certain things that we did not know before, and answered so many questions that I had, like why was Ellie so distant and mad at Joel? Why did Ellie fight Joel at the party when he was just trying to defend Ellie from Seth from being homophobic? And we got these answers in the flashbacks. My first question was actually revealed on one of the flashbacks showing Ellie going back to the hospital in Salt Lake City after escaping Jackson because she couldn't take the lies of Joel anymore. Joel catches up to her and Ellie threatens Joel to leave Jackson and that he'll never see her again if Joel lied one more time. Joel confessed and Ellie just couldn't take it. She broke down and just seeing how this scene played out honestly was incredible. She said that she couldn't forgive him, and that's why we see Ellie being very distant with Joel in the beginning of the game. Honestly, that hurt to see, and it was very emotional to see how things turned out to be. Every flashback in Ellie's section just came at the right time for me, usually after a brutal moment that Ellie has faced, which was a nice change of pace in my opinion. And seeing that museum flashback of Ellie and Joel, just seeing how happy they were on Ellie's birthday, Joel making Ellie practice how to swim, showing her a dinosaur museum and a space museum, giving her a little gift and making her feel like she's gonna take off in that capsule was truly one of the best scenes in this video game. I cried so much experiencing Ellie and Joel and just seeing how happy Joel was with Ellie. Just seeing how Ellie was you know, trying to teach him new things and everything about space and the dinosaurs and him being interested like a father would be for his daughter. It truly gave me vibes of The Last of Us Part 1 but in a different way and I'm so grateful for Naughty Dog for making these type of scenes. Ellie's section of this story is god tier and Naughty Dog couldn't have done a better job than what they did. Now. Ellie's section of the story culminated when she went looking for Abby in the aquarium. She saw Owen and Mel there and tried to interrogate them the way Joel did in part 1, but then losing control of the situation and then had to kill Owen and Mel in the process. And then after that, Ellie finds out that the girl that she killed was actually pregnant, and that was truly rock bottom for Ellie. And the way Ellie's section played out, and seeing how Abby tracked her down to get revenge for Owen and Mel, just how everything turned out to be, it was incredible. My immersion on the game was honestly through the roof, and I was very excited and scared at the same time to see what was going to happen next. Now, this is where, in my personal opinion, after everything that we went through with Ellie, all those intense moments that made me feel immersed in this game, honestly truly went out of the window when they transitioned to the story to Abby. I mean, I was at peak excitement guys. I truly wanted to see what was going to happen next and to see how Ellie was going to get out of that situation in the theater with Abby. But we had to go back four years and basically the story explained Abby's beginnings on why she killed Joel and why she became the person she is today. Now, to be honest, my immersion was still there. I was intrigued by seeing how it all played out and, you know, being revealed that the doctor that Joel killed was Abby's father. So, it completely justified why Abby went out and seeked revenge on Joel. Because Joel doomed humanity and he took the life of her father. That was great. That flashback was really good. But I would have preferred to actually have that flashback probably in the beginning of the game so we can have a certain sympathy for Abby but they just didn't do it that way. Where I completely lost immersion was when I felt the game just reset it and made us play as Abby days later after she killed Joel. Abby was having nightmares every day about the death of her father and it shows that her act of revenge solved absolutely nothing. 
it even made matters worse for her, and it was great to see these themes. But what I disliked is that transition that was just so rough from Ellie to Abby. It just literally felt like it came out of nowhere, and it broke immersion for me. All I had in the back of my head, to be honest with you guys, in the first hours was basically, when am I going to go back to the scene in the theater with Abby and Ellie? And even though I have to admit, Abby did grow as me as a character during her story, and the redemption arc that she went on was actually very good. She helped Yara and Lev, who were trying to escape the Seraphites, and she betrayed the WLF to do the right thing and not support the war between the Seraphites and the WLF. Also, Abby's encounters with different types of infected were truly intense and by far my favorite gameplay moments of the whole game. Like, it was astonishing to see, and for those who've played this game, that Ground Zero Hospital part is honestly one of the most amazing parts of this game. That's when you had to get the tools to do a safe surgery on Yara's arm, and honestly, that section was just got here. It was amazing. The whole thing was intense, and you know what I'm talking about if you played that section. The fights versus the different types of infected was on another level, and all I can do is applaud Naughty Dog. Honestly, overall, the enemy types, all the different types of infected, were majorly improved from the first game, and made these sections the most brutal and intense moments I've had in any type of media before. It truly felt like a horror game, and in many aspects, and it was actually a treat to experience. But going back to the parts that I just, you know, didn't like, switching to Abby, the way Naughty Dog did it, truly made this game kind of feel messy. I lost my immersion, and it took me like an hour or two to get it back. Abby's story section also had way too many flashbacks, and the way they placed them, some of them flashbacks just felt completely off in my opinion. And that is coming from someone who actually likes flashbacks in a game, but only if it's executed right. Now, if you can overlook those negative things on Abby's section, the rest of the game is truly amazing. I really got to like the characters in Abby's section. Owen, Manny, because I'm Latino, Mel was a good character, Yara and Lev were absolutely my favorite side characters in Abby's section, because their story was the most interesting in this whole part of the game. And what Naughty Dog does with Abby's character, I really like the direction they went with her, and made her show how Abby got her revenge, but it just took away more than what she gained. And that is why Abby felt like she had to help Yara and Lev, and Abby in some way became like a Joel to Lev, just like Joel protected and cared for Ellie in the first game. Now, my last criticism of Abby's section is that 90% of her story, of her section, had absolutely nothing to do with the main plot of the story. And even though I do like Abby's story, I just feel Naughty Dog should have focused a little bit more on day 3 to tie Abby back to Ellie. I think it would have made it a little bit more interesting. But I still enjoyed Abby's section, nevertheless, and it was worth seeing her point of view of the situation. I appreciate Naughty Dog for giving us both sides of the coin, and making us see that no one is actually right or wrong. Because we all are different, with different views, and we might think that we are in the right and the other person is in the wrong. But for others, they think the same, that they're in the right and you are in the wrong. Seeing how these two women acted, in a brutal world like The Last of Us, seeing how they both lost their own fathers. One of them is seeking for vengeance for her father and sacrificing everything for it, the other one already got her vengeance but felt even more empty when she actually did it. It's truly a beauty to see after you give it some thought and after you play this game. Then we finally get to the battle between Abby and Ellie. What shocked me the most in this moment was that Naughty Dog kept you in the perspective of Abby and you were forced to beat Ellie up. I have to say, I couldn't do it. I didn't want to hurt Ellie, but now that I played Abby, I didn't want to hurt Abby if I had to control Ellie. It was a very conflicting moment, and I just did not know what to do. So to progress the story, I just did what I needed to do, and after that, Abby broke Ellie's arm, 
punched her so much that she almost lost consciousness and seeing Dina trying to save Ellie and then Dina getting knocked out by Abby and Abby almost killing her, it was truly an intense moment. I was very scared for the lives of these characters. My immersion in the game at this moment finally went to an all-time high, scared as hell to see what Abby was going to do. Ellie was begging for Abby not to kill Dina and Abby just didn't care, she was like, good, because Ellie killed Mel who was pregnant. And then seeing Lev stopping Abby and Abby realizing that revenge is never going to bring her anything because she already did it with Joel. Abby chose not to get revenge, she let Dina and Ellie live and parted ways. Now for me, Naughty Dog truly nailed this part and it shows you how much work went into this. And honestly, I didn't say this in the whole review, but the acting, the lines delivered, just everything made all these scenes in the whole game worked and especially this one. And honestly, if Ashley Johnson and Laura Bailey at least do not get nominated for the best game actresses for their performances for Ellie and Abby, I am truly going to cause hell on earth because they were amazing on portraying these characters. So now moving on to the next scene in which we see Ellie's life after these events. It shows that she lets go of her hunger to avenge Joel. She has a perfect life, a farmhouse just like Dina and Ellie were discussing in the beginning of the game that they wanted to have, the scenery, honestly a masterpiece of a scene. The epilogue was going in a great way and I truly felt happy for Ellie that she finally moved on and she let go of her obsession for revenge. But in the back of my mind, I was like, did she let go? And then she clearly suffers from PTSD, remembering Joel's death and just seeing how all these things were going on. It seemed like Ellie was good, but then it shows that Ellie, inside of her, she hasn't moved forward. And with Tommy's visit, begging Ellie to continue and avenge Joel because Tommy can't do it himself because he's incapacitated, trying to guilt Ellie into doing what she promised Tommy that she was going to do, this made it worse for Ellie. And even though Ellie couldn't say that she really wanted to do it at that time and made Tommy mad and he left, inside she wanted to do this. And after that, she actually did. She rather sacrificed everything. She left everything behind. She sacrificed her perfect life with Dina, with JJ, her house, her peace, her family, her happiness, her sanity, and even herself to finish what she started. So. Right now, I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on the ending of the game. But before that, I want to give special recognition to Tommy. If someone truly lost it all in this game, it wasn't just Ellie. It was Tommy as well who lost it all. Tommy lost his ability to walk properly. He lost his eye. Probably that bullet shot from Abby messed his head too. Maria left him. He lost his brother Joel. He carries the burden for Jesse's life too. This man honestly lost everything, and seeing how he reacted in Ellie's house, it's not uncharacteristic of him. It's just showing a man who lost everything and just a man who has nothing else to do and is desperate for revenge. It's the only thing that keeps him going, and it's very sad that he can't go and do it himself, and that's why he asks Ellie to do it. I feel so much for Tommy, and this scene made me incredibly sad. So. Now we're going to talk about the ending of the game. So there's a lot of people that really do not like this ending. They hate it because Ellie did not kill Abby, which was the whole point of Ellie's revenge story that she wanted to kill Abby. So it made the game feel like the whole thing was just pointless. Some people also say that the game could have benefited from choosing to kill Abby or spare her and you choose your own ending. Honestly, it would have been interesting to see Naughty Dog do these things, but I kind of understand why they didn't do it. But in all honesty, I loved this ending. The reason why I do love it is because of the message that the game gives out when Ellie decided not to drown Abby. I loved this ending because you can see Ellie when she ties Abby down and Abby goes to Lev and rescues her. Just seeing how Ellie not attacking her because she was seeing that connection between both of them. I was happy that Ellie did not attack them. I really wanted her to just leave it here, even if she sacrificed everything. Seeing the state Abby was, seeing how much she suffered barely with any food and just no water in a long time. Also, Ellie's body failing her, you can see that she just didn't want to do it anymore. And that's what I wanted. Ellie was going to leave. 
and then she was haunted again, reminded by Joel's loss, and forces Abby to fight her. I really didn't want this to happen, but it did. You can see Ellie truly not letting go of this toxic behavior, of this toxic thing that she has to complete what she started. And this is such a human thing because we do this all the time. We know we shouldn't do things, but we still do it. And we only understand when we truly hit rock bottom. Seeing these two girls doing th terrible things in the past, both letting revenge consume them. One has already let revenge consume her completely, and one is on the verge to let it consume her. In the process, both girls fight brutally. Ellie loses two fingers, but still manages to choke and start drowning Abby, until Ellie is reminded again of Joel, but specifically on another occasion, not Joel's death, but their conversation on Joel's porch, the day before Joel's death. This is what made Ellie understand that if she were to kill Abby, she would gain absolutely nothing. Even though Ellie sacrificed it all for this goal, she ended up leaving it because she wanted to save whatever of humanity was left in her. She knew that also by remembering Joel, that Joel wouldn't want Ellie to do this. Even if Joel would have done something completely different and kill anyone he needed to kill if it was Ellie who was killed, with no remorse. Ellie also could have seen herself in Abby and Lev. In Abby, she could have seen herself because she saw how killing Joel only brought pain to Abby's life. And in Lev, because Lev is somehow like Ellie was back in part one. A kid protected by Abby, who represents Joel like when Joel protected Ellie in the first game. This ending has a gigantic room for interpretation, and there's probably more that I'm missing, but this is what I understood and appreciated during my playthrough. This ending just lets us know that even though you can lose yourself completely and burn everything you have in the process, you still have a chance to do what is right. And when we finally get to that last flashback scene, putting the final piece in the puzzle of this story, seeing Joel not regretting what he did because he loved Ellie that much, and Ellie trying to give the relationship a chance to rebuild, truly broke my heart and I couldn't stop crying from that moment until the end credits. And seeing Joel cry when Ellie said, I'm gonna try to forgive you, it truly broke me down. Honestly, I just couldn't stop. The meaning of this ending and that conversation that was going to be their last conversation before Joel's death, it really hits home. It makes you appreciate those who you love and are still alive at this moment because you don't know if the last conversation you had with that person might be your last. Drinking coffee. Where'd you get that? Uh, those people that came through last week. Oh. I'm a little embarrassed as to what I had to trade to get it, but it's not bad. I had Seth under control. Yeah, I know. And you need to stop harassing Jesse about my patrols. Okay. Uh, Dana. Is she your girlfriend? No. No, she... That was just one kiss. It doesn't mean anything. She just... I don't know why she did that. But you do like her. <sighs> so stupid. Okay. 
I have no idea what that girl's intentions are, but... But I do know that she would be lucky to have you. You're such an asshole. I'm not trying to... I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. But you took that from me. <sighs> if somehow the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment, I would do it all over again. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. I'd like that. Ellie, by saving Abby, forgave her, remembering that she was in the process to forgive Joel as well. And now that Ellie lost it all to avenge Joel, including her ability to play the guitar, which was the last memory she had of Joel, is truly sad to see. A girl who before used to say that her biggest fear is to end up alone. And that fear just became a reality. This is a story that began as a story of the manifestation of hatred and vengeance that comes from the loss of a loved one. And by the end of the story, it becomes a story of forgiveness, even though it cost these characters almost everything. And that at the end of the day, it was just all for nothing. For me, that was a powerful ending. And it shows the realistic behavior of human beings, that we only let go of things by auto-destroying ourselves and our lives. Sometimes we need to go through those moments to finally understand. This is The Last of Us Part 2. For me, in my personal opinion, a flawed masterpiece. Yes, it does have a few pacing issues and some scenes that do feel out of place. And if they would have sectioned those scenes in different places, probably the story would have felt a little bit more structured. But for me, this is truly one of the great games ever made. And I truly believe when time passes, people will start to appreciate this story a little bit more. The graphics, the characters, the acting, the infected, the enemies, the music and sound effects, and most of the story of the game makes up 100% for some of the issues this game had. And honestly, I'm blessed that I got to play this game. This is the most emotional, brutal, and intense game I've ever played in my life. And I truly would recommend this game for you guys to try it out. Now, is this game for everyone? No, it's not. To play this game, we truly have to have the ability to have an open mind and not let others influence your take on this game. This game doesn't give us what we want. It might be a happy ending or some unrealistic outcome that we might want. If you can accept that this is the art and the vision of the developers in Naughty Dog and immerse yourself in the story that they're trying to tell and accept the real consequences that these characters face, then this game is for you. If you can't, and you can't open yourself to that possibility, then this game is truly not for you. But one thing is for sure at the end of the day, 
this game is far from being trash, just by the gameplay, music, and graphics alone. So at least, there's that. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I still prefer The Last of Us Part 1, because its story is about finding meaning and love in your life again, even in a brutal world like The Last of Us. I'm a sucker for that, and that is why it's still my favorite game of all time. But The Last of Us Part 2, in my opinion, comes close to that story, and it's a proper sequel. If you disliked or liked the game, it would be great to hear your insight in the comment section down below. I am very grateful that I got to experience this flawed yet masterpiece of a game. And that is all I can say about this. Thank you Naughty Dog for The Last of Us Part 2. Let me know your detailed thoughts about The Last of Us Part 2. Did you love it or did you dislike it? Every argument is welcomed, just with no disrespectful ones please. Let's keep it respectful in the comment section down below. Thank you for the amazing support you guys have given me in the past couple of months giving me the opportunity to have a channel that grew so fast talking about The Last of Us Part 2 with you guys. It has been a truly amazing experience. Now, we move on to new games, and even though I will still talk about The Last of Us Part 2 in the near future, I can't wait for the next adventures and share this passion of gaming with you guys. Like and share this video because it really helps the channel out. Subscribe to my channel and join this amazing positive community in which we respect others no matter what our opinions are. Stay positive, stay safe, keep playing, endure and survive my fellow survivors, and I'll see you guys next time.